she got some of that on recording earlier. So um, one thing I did want to share with you all, because um, I didn't mention this yesterday, was the fact that, oh, I actually start off with a question for you. So computers, they can do math really well, right? Right, everyone, everyone believes that, knows that. Um, can they do it perfectly? Can they do it perfectly? I'll, I'll answer the questions about homework, uh, Percy, because I want to make sure I at least go over everything. Um, well, computers cannot do math perfectly. They have a limit because their brain has a limit. Uh, some of you will notice that on your computer, if I were to go, yeah, I should here, search. Hold on, I'm just gonna type in operating system. As we begin to type it, you'll uh, you see on my screen, I say it says about your PC. So you could just go to your system settings, but what I want to show you all is the uh, how many bits my computer has. So the operating system is a 64-bit operating system. Um, computers nowadays will be a 32-bit or a 64-bit. Actually, most of them should only be 64. But some of your softwares, when you download them, they'll give you the option to do 32-bit or 64-bit, and it's just about how it's able to process 64 can do more calculations, um, which means your, um, which means every operation that's done will be more accurate than the 32-bit. And also can get done faster than. And so I kind of wanted to show this, and here's an example to show it. Um, the smallest positive number that a computer can hold um, is, Two to the negative 53rd. A 64 bit computer can host two to the negative 20, uh, 53rd. And for a 32 bit, it's two to the negative uh, 23rd. And this is known as machine error or machine epsilon. Um, so, what I'm going to do, what I did was I took the number one and I added that. Notice the result I got. I would expect to get 1.0 and then a bunch of zeros and then some number at the end. But because this is the smallest number that it can actually hold, we try to add one to it, it can't hold all of those digits. And so it rounds it off to one. All right, that makes sense. So I save that as this number, uh, or sorry, as this variable here, S. And then I subtract it from S, the same thing I just added, All right? So if I were to add something to the number one and then subtract it, the result should be one. It's not. Look what I get. I get 0.999999 because it can't, it could not hold, um, it could not hold all of that information. And so when I subtracted it off, it gave me, it gave me um, the rounded off part because all it had was, uh, it had the number one. And now it's trying to subtract off the smallest possible positive number from one. All right. So this is an error. You may look at this and say, oh, you know, it's not that far off. Um, imagine if you're if we start multiplying with this now, or we were to raise this to a power, it is getting um, it is becoming more and more inaccurate. So your computers still have limits to it. And this is why that CPU that's chosen, or GPU if you're going to get really into um, the graphics part too, is important because that will, um, the, the better you have, the number of bits that are in that, um, and the number of bits that it can process, the more accurate it will be. Okay, so I wanted to talk about it because we uh, left off with processes. All right, so before we got into input and output devices, I wanted to ask you guys to give me a couple of things that you thought were input and output devices. Some of you may have already gone through, um, may have already gone through the pages, which is fine if you have, but uh, well, I wanted you to really think about it because it's called input and output. How do you input data into a computer? How is it output it to you? And I will answer the questions about the homework. So don't, don't, don't stretch out about that too much. Um, but input and output devices. So what are some input devices based off the fact that you have to use it to input information into your computer or data in your computer? Mouse and keyboard, okay, good. Touch screens, excellent. Most people don't even think about a touch screen. 
A microphone, yes. Microphone's another one, that's good. So keyboard mouse, the touch screen, if you have one, and a microphone. Those are all in devices. Why are they input devices? Because you press the keys on the keyboard in order to tell the computer to do stuff, right? You can think of it simply as how do you enter things uh, on a word processor. So if you had Microsoft Word open, how would you enter, in, how would you enter um, data into it? Well, you use the keyboard. You also use the mouse so you could tell it where to in the search of points, right? Touch screen so that you could use kind of a combination of the keyboard and the mouse. Uh, the phone. Uh, with the fans fit into a category. Hmm. That's a question. So the fans and everything that's uh, part of the computer that helps it process, those usually are fit into the processor devices. But there's another category that we're not really going to talk about that's called peripheral devices. And those are things that are just on the peripheral. So um, just, just to the outside. And so the water cooling and fans would, and I would actually fit more into that. They're just uh, um, additional accessories that can help the computer function. Um, so, but I, I do know people that like to say, no, they're part of the process because if they weren't there, then you know everything would crash, which is true to an extent, right? But you can still have a processor running without water cooling and fans. In. But they are just uh, peripheral devices. That's a good question. Um, so the microphone, though, most people don't think about that as an input device. That's how you input sounds into things that are get recorded, right? Same thing with webcam. Laptops don't really have cooling that, and they can operate. They do have some type of cooling, though. Um, I know you're talking about like the the liquid that's actually through, kind of like how an actual AC unit works. Have some some type of um, device. <laughs> So um, one of the input device that uh, not that oftentimes is forgotten is the webcam, um, because the webcam is taking in data, right? It's taking in the, uh, the the recording that it sees, um, the video that is gathering, um, camera that if it takes a picture, it's taking in those graphics, and then it does something to uh, it, it saves it on the computer. And you can do different things to it. Right? So that's another input device. Output devices. What about some output devices? Anyone got some good output devices? Monitor and your speakers, good. Monitor, good. Speakers, good. A lot of monitor and speakers, yeah. So about the input devices we mentioned, the webcam, the mic, uh, the keyboard, the mouse, the touchscreen. That you can think. How how do we see? What? How do you? How do you see what you typed in or what you um, used to input? Is a headset the input and output device? The um, uh, what do you call things? The earbuds. That that portion of the headset is an output device. Input device. The microphone portion. So it has both on there. Um, there's two parts to that headset. It's not that that the head that is both input and output is that the headset has multiple parts to it. It's like the touch screen. The touch screen has two parts to it, but you would say a touch screen is an input and output device. Well, it's not really. The uh, part of it that uh, allows you to input information is actually a combination with the software, um, but it recognizes where you're touching it, and that talks to the uh, operating system, which talks to the software to then so that's how it's getting the input, but the output is based off what the software shows you doing as you touch it. So it's two parts to it. Okay. Um, but there are other output devices besides uh, the monitor and the speakers. Uh, can anyone think of other ways that you may show data from a computer? Think about when you go to the movie theaters, because you can go to movie theaters now. How's it shown? It's not shown on the monitor. How's it shown? Projector. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hopefully you guys said projector. That's good. Yeah, it's uh, it's shown with the projector. Um. Okay. 
if uh, some of your classes, um, if you were on campus right now, they might still do things, uh, I say a little old school. Instead of uh, just putting pages in Canvas, they may um, do something uh, to show you that information on sheets of paper. How do they do that? It's a really bad way to describe that. But how do they do that? What kind of device do you use to show information on pieces of paper? A printer. Yes, a printer. That's right. So by using a, a printer, a printer is also uh, an output device. Okay, cool. So there's a couple of different ones um, that you all can think about as you are um, building your computer set. So uh, I want to talk about, oh, yes, CD and DVD burner, both of those. So this, the actual, uh, so those are storage devices, right? But if we're going to output stuff from our computer, for instance, when we, uh, do, 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 I'm trying to think of like this. Um, for instance, when we, uh, when you burn a CD, you are writing it onto that, um, onto that storage device. And so you could think of it as an output, but when you play it, something's going to read it and then the output comes through the speaker. All right, so. We talked about input devices, talked about output devices. I'm sure you all have watched Mr. Ford's videos as well. Okay, so I'm gonna get into some software basics. So the basics of software. I suggest uh, looking through these videos, but I kind of thought about this process a little before we were talking about ROM, uh, the read-only memory, because that's where your operating system is, is at home, it's a nice little bed, and then it uh it it gets it gets woken up and uh well your computer boots up and wakes up the operating system. The operating system then tells how it tells everything else how to run, how all your applications run, and everything like that. So we talked about that. Uh, I do suggest you watch this video though because um, it goes into a little more detail. Um, and then there's two types of software that we'll look at, system software and then application software. So your system software is everything that you need for your computer to uh, function appropriately. So it's operating system. There are certain utilities as well that are on your computer um, that will be system software. And then the other uh, software, the application software, would be every app that you use. So your internet, your internet browser is an application. Um, if you have VLC media player, Windows media player, um, Zoom, we're using WebEx right now, unless you're using it directly through the internet, where you download the app, anything that's called an app would be an application software. Um, and then there are specialized application softwares that do very specific tasks. So that's what we're going to look at when we talk about software. So, um, Couple of operating systems that are well known. We have Windows. The most current version is Windows 10. We have uh, Mac OS, which the most current version is OS X. We have iOS. Um, this needs to be updated because they're on like 13.6, I think. Um, Chrome OS, which they had a new name. Um, it came out recently with for this because they didn't want to continue um, having their numbers increase. Android, same thing, they have a new name now because they didn't want their numbers to keep increasing. Just how Windows stopped that, uh, you already recall, I mentioned this a couple of days ago, how um, Windows 10 is supposed to be like, okay, we're done, we don't need to make anything else. Everything else would just be little tiny updates here and there. Same thing with Mac. And they were using like 10, using X. Well, if you really think about it, 10 is, uh, in Roman numerals is an X. So everyone's using an X. I think they called it like that too. It's just kind of the, the new thing um, to say, we've, we're done creating new versions of this. It's the best it'll ever be. We'll just have updates. Um, but uh, yes, most people do not know that Android is distributed by Google. A lot of people will believe that it's uh, made by Microsoft. It is not, it is made by Google. Um, 
yeah. Oh, I really have to say that. Windows has its own phone that uses the Windows operating system. So, um, why do they think the Windows phone died off? Um, I think the Windows phone died out just because of popularity. Everyone already had a Mac at that point, and uh, all the other companies were using, um, they were using their own operating systems that were created and then eventually jumped on the Android train um, because that with Android, just it's actually kind of the same thing with the laptops. Um, when it comes to Apple, they made the hardware and the software together. When it comes to um, Windows computers, it was we create the operating system and we can make our own computers, but anyone else can do the hardware and we'll just put ours on there if they want. With the phones, same kind of thing happened. Um, yeah, same thing happened with the phones. Apple's like, we make the hardware, we can make our own uh, operating system for it. People are making their, have to make their own operating system and then Google creates Android and they're like, ooh, I can use this on my device. Ooh, I can use this on my device. And then so now everyone like, oh, I can just use Androids instead of having to try to make my own um, to handle all these different features. That's 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 mainly why that happened. Windows was kind of into that game of, oh, you can put our stuff on these on these smaller devices. Because they also had to make a a uh, a small. I want to. It sounds weird saying a smaller version, but they had to make a version of Windows, um, whichever it was at that point in time. It would make a, a version of Windows that would operate on the phone, so they wouldn't need as much processing power. Um, but it still had to be the same. Instead of just making like a, I don't know what they would call it, but Windows strictly for phones and tablets, they wanted to use the same thing. Um, and it, it's, it's like a different bit, so like an 8-bit or 16-bit uh, system. Kind of like what I was talking about earlier, how we 64-bits are mainly on most computers, but you can get them with a 32-bit. And most softwares will ask you do you want the 32-bit version or 64-bit version and you really should look to see what what version you have on your computer um, i showed that earlier if you just type in the search bar operating system on a taskbar it'll pop up but really you're just going to your system settings and looking at your pc and it'll tell you how many bits you have um, if you're on a phone the phone can't handle that much processing power so um well they can't right now um, but uh, so that's why they really didn't get into they got into the game a little late and they didn't want to make their own um, version so they wanted to use the same thing that they already had um, but try to shrink it down you can still get uh windows phones uh it's not like completely unheard of um but you usually have to go to, to windows directly or go to a microsoft store uh, i should say um what else to say to that they have also like just like they do with their own just like they do with their um uh, with computers if you have a phone and you want to put Windows operations on it, you can do that. Um, you just have to find the correct one. So you want to know what your um, your the CPU within your phone can handle. Um, for example, I was doing some stuff with our on our board, and I had to get an eight bit Windows. Um, to, I was trying to get it to run. Um, I wanted to run Microsoft Word, and be able to handle Access and PowerPoint as well. Um, just because I just want to see if I could do it. Um, so I need a smaller version that could that could run on what I, on the unit that I had. So and people were kind of telling me to just add a bunch of uh, SD cards so that I could run 32 bit on it. Um, and that didn't work too well. So uh, thoughts on the PS5 and next gen consoles? Um, I think that many of them are gonna. Go route that everyone else is doing that oh we've already created our final version what they're really doing like sony i think they're trying to keep up on the game because it, it, if you put keep adding a number on the end of it it makes it look cooler um can the graphics get better yeah but why do you need e even better graphics that's going to be weird you, your eyes can't even process uh some of the levels that they can actually get to with this stuff uh, unless you have all this special stuff like special lighting and all this other different things um and it makes like uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, there was a trailer for for the PS5 and they were doing it on I think it was like a 4K uh, 4K 
and this, it looks realer. That's not even a real word, but it looks it looks more real than reality. And that's really that's, to me that's really creepy and scary. Can you imagine your brain like watching that and playing that for an extended period of time? It would really mess you up, to be honest. Imagine looking at that and then go look, you know, just at your room afterwards or go outside. It would, it would mess you up. So uh, my my thoughts is that they're eventually going to go the route of everyone else and be like, OK, we made the last generation, but we'll just have little updates here and there. Um, yeah, that, that's my thoughts. We'll see what happens. though. Something, yeah, somebody's going to keep playing the game while they can. I mean, they, they play the game with TV still, too. Um, so. um, device drivers and other utilities. So um, the virus protection, the uh, firewall, you may see like Windows Defender uh, come up on, on your computer uh, on its time whenever you're using it. Um, the idea of having a backup uh, system already built into your computer is also a very important thing. Um, that way, if things you know, your computer just crashes, you, it, there is a backup uh, already being saved. So your computer will automatically set most of those things up. Uh, how many of you have ever done disk cleanup before on your computer, where you delete all the things that aren't necessarily being used or temporary files? So if you were to, I'm not telling you to do this. I don't want anyone to do it and be like, you had me delete such and such. Um, I'm just showing you what it looks like. So you do this cleanup, and what it'll do is it'll give you a list of, so right now it says, hey, I could get to 23.9 um, megabytes by deleting this stuff. So it goes through and looks at things that aren't really being used. If you have anything in a recycle bin, it's still there on your computer. It's not completely gone. Um, but what you could do is clean up your system by um, deleting these items, and it will actually delete it. So sometimes people say, you know, oh, you throw things in a recycle bin. I deleted it. It's gone. It's not gone. It's in a recycle bin, and then once you delete it, um, once you delete it from your recycle bin, then okay, now it's gone. Uh, it it really is more like it exploded it. In, uh, it's dry. Um, Wiz tree. I've looked it up. See what that is. Um, so when it when it actually explodes across your drive, what actually happens is it has these little fragments. So like, I can't remember what the bomb note is. There's like an explosive that like literally is just a bunch of like metal pieces and something and the explosion just shoots the fragments out. And so that's how they like hurt people because the fragments are shot out at such speeds and they pierce people, whatever. Um, but that's kind of what happens with your, um, when you actually delete something on your computer. Um, it doesn't shoot fragments out to hurt people, but it, it hurts, uh, hurts the, the file that was there. And explodes it all across the drive. Well, it splits it up in all these fragments on your drive so that it can uh, process smaller. This Amazon that shows you, oh, that sounds cool. Instead of running task manager, you use WizTree so you can see what what's being what's being used the most. Okay. Uh, so uh, so Ben was uh, just wrote in the chat that if you look up WizTree. It's a software that allows you to see what's taking up the most space on your computer. Oh, it's this space, not CPUs. Okay. Well, you can do that with the task manager too. Um, but so he's saying that that way you can look at, if you say like your computer says, hey, I'm running out of space, that way you can look up to see what's taking up a lot of space and maybe you can delete some things. Um, but back to the, the fragments. So as the files split all across your hard drive, you can use what's known as a disk defragmenter. And what it does is goes through and like looks for those pieces and kind of pieces back together. Have any of you ever played the game where you like someone writes a letter and then you rip it up in a bunch of pieces and then you try to like put it back together like puzzle pieces? Um, that's what this will do for you. And it actually will help optimize, how they call it, and they actually call it um, uh, defrag and, and optimize drive. And so this is disk defragmenter. That's what it used to be called. It was, just, it was a very simple name. But what this does is it'll, it'll go through and pull those pieces back together. The reason why that's, that's important, can you imagine, like, just imagine that you're in a field that has all these fragmented pieces. Okay, So, like, you're in your outside your backyard. That explosive device I mentioned earlier has gone off. No one's hurt. It's just gone off. And so you have to now try to navigate to certain points 
in your backyard. As you, you know, uh, shortest distance would be go to a straight line. Well, you can't really do that because now you have to go around all of these fragments, right? To get to it. Well, by um, defragmenting your computer and bringing those files closer to get, uh, bringing those pieces back together, it makes it easier to travel through. So then you're, uh, you can travel through your drive faster. Does that uh, make sense, to everyone? You delete something explodes all over. Defragmenter will allow it to be closer together so you can move through. Um, and this is why I mentioned a couple of times about how if you want to actually, you know, get rid of your computer, you need to go office space on it. Um, because, you know, like, like I see, as I just mentioned, still get to information that's on a computer, even if you, uh, you know, magnetize it uh, and uh, do some other things, you still get, you're really going to have to drill a hole through the disk drive and then, you know, kill it with fire uh, to really get rid of it. Okay, so this is the point in the class where people begin to argue about what's the best operating system. Uh, remember, Android and uh, iOS are for your phones and tablets. They are not for computers. Get that out the way right now. Uh, but for some people, those are the only type of devices that they need. But the question is, what is, which is the best operating system? Really, the question should be, what is the our, which, which, which operating system is best for you? And how do you make that decision? What's best for you? Um, if I have an iPhone, would it make sense for me to get a Windows computer? Not sure, why not? What's wrong with getting a Windows computer? Nothing. But if I have a MacBook, then everything can, uh, can sync together very easily, right? I can even, um, there's an AirDrop, Use some, take something from my phone and automatically send it to my computer with great ease. Um, I was on my, some of you got on a little earlier, you saw that there was two Christopher Stevens in WebEx. That's because I was on my iPad. The option came up for me to uh, use the MacBook um, as well. It's like, hey, do you want to, do you want to send this over to the MacBook? So that way I wouldn't have two people on or two use, uh, two users on. Um, I didn't, I did not it because it's not cool to have two on. But that's it's a makes it a lot. It's a seamless or seamless. It's a seamless transition between the two uh, when you use it in that way, because it's the same. It's it comes from the same company, so they can talk to each other very easily because they know how to talk to each other. Uh, another reason why having the same uh, company for everything, like just like same thing with the hardware and software, like I mentioned with Apple. That's the reason why they don't just say, "Oh, you guys can use our iOS. I see you guys can use our." Mac OS, if you want to, you can use our operating system to put it in any computer you want. That's why they don't do that, um, so that they can have that seamless interaction and communication between the uh, software and hardware as needed. All right. um, for me, when I was in school, I had to have a Windows computer. How else was I going to do um, use Office applications? Those of you that have Macs may say you can use Office applications. Well, can you? You can use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. They don't have the same capabilities or same full capabilities that um, you do on any other computer, which I think is funny because um, if you think about it, Windows, uh, Microsoft is not making the hardware for all those other computers, only only their own. But it's still those um, those applications and software they create will work on any of those computers the same, but it won't work on the Mac the same. I, I just think that's funny. Um, how they have that set up, but it does make sense, right? They make the operating system, and the operating system tells the software how to operate. Um, it tells the application how to run, when to run, and everything else. So it makes sense that um, those applications made by Microsoft work better on a Windows computer, okay. uh, and they have more functionality. Some of those applications won't work at all on uh, on a Mac OS uh, or a Chromebook even. So um, that's some things to keep in mind. Um, nowadays, most students use Chromebooks because they're cheap, they're easy to buy. And the idea is all you need to do is get on the internet. When I taught high school, we had this grant from the government to be one of the first, te uh, first technology driven high schools, uh, or I guess I say schools period. And the idea, that was their idea. They said, we can just buy the students a bunch of computers that only get on the internet. 
and we just had a really strong internet connection at school. That's all we need. And that's exactly what they did. And then they ran into a bunch of issues with that. Um, because the computers were, they were cheaper, yes, because all they were worried about was all we had to do was get on the internet. That means there was less, um, less memory. So the students can store anything directly on those uh, netbooks that they got. Um, or they couldn't store as much. Sometimes they couldn't do store anything at all. Because um, they would exceed it, uh, depending on what classes they were in, what projects they were doing. Um, so those are just different things to think about. If you can always have constant access to the internet, Chromebooks are great, right? But if you can't, how are you going to really fully use it? There are a few, few apps that you can do offline on the Chromebook. Um, one thing that they have done since then is that they have um, a beta. Uh, they call it Linux beta, but really, it, really what it is is it, it allows you to use Linux on your computer, um, which means you can have access to doing those other things that you couldn't before uh, on a Chromebook. So Linux is honestly like the base root of most operating systems. It is the it is an open source, which that means uh, think back to when we talk about intellectual property rights. Anyone can use it. Anyone can change it to do whatever they want with it. Because of that, it can, Linux can run very easily on any type of uh, computer, like MacBook. Um, so, which operating system is best? That's up to you to decide. Uh, Linux is also cheaper than, to get than any of the others because it's open source. So, and then you can modify it from there and create your own operating system. All right. Applications. I already mentioned this. These are your apps. So um, they're designed to, to do specific activities uh, to benefit the user. So there are tons and tons and tons of apps out there. Um, you can make your own apps too uh, very easily, um, depending on which, uh, what if you want to use iOS or Android, or if you want it to be on a Windows computer or Mac OS. Very simple to make an app nowadays, but we have some that are uh, pre-built in that everyone needs to know about. Um, that's word processing. Microsoft Word is the one that we'll be looking at in this course. We've already used it at least once. Um, but you have the capability to, yes, you can do uh, word processing, so you can type words in there. But there's so much more that you can do with it. And we'll see some of uh, some of the other things that you can do with it as well. Spreadsheet. So. Uh, allows you to see a workbook in a uh, GUI space, so a graphical user uh, interface. And yeah, you can type things in there. Yeah, it can do some math. Is that it? No, it can do so much more. Um, you can even do some things with uh, emojis now, like do emoji analysis. Um, that's getting more and more popular. Um, actually, some of you may actually have this pop up on your on your emails and your text messages. Um, but it'll read what you have written and it actually will put an emoji to go with it based off of uh, the flow and feel of it. It'll say, oh, this looks very business professional. And I'll put a little guy at the bottom, like the little uh, uh, emoji for business. It's like, it looks like a suit with like a, a red bow tie uh, with like span suspenders on or something. And then other times it's like, it'll do uh, like a, a jokey face and stuff like that. But it'll do that based off of uh, algorithm that's in the background, looking at words and saying, okay, these words are used together in this way. That's usually this. And that's there so you can actually paste it in. Why would you use a emoji for something professional? So that is actually um, something they added in. And the purpose of it was so that when you talk through text, like even, even right there with that question, right? Someone could read that. I, I read that as you're asking a question. Someone could read that and be like, Ugh, why is he why is he tripping on why would you use an emoji for making sense? That's not what that, in my mind, that's not what you're saying at all. You're just asking, why would you use that? Um, that's why. Because so much so so much is communicated through text now that people have lost that sense of um being able to read from the voice or in their faces and seeing their reaction to see like to understand that this is how they are actually saying this, this is the emotion behind it. And so to help with that, they have added these, uh, they, they've added emojis to let people know, this is how I'm saying this. Um, 
So yeah, that's why. I I, I never actually click it so that it actually gets pasted in. You like to use it though, um, because that way, if I'm typing an email and I want it to be like super professional, if I see that professional icon come up at the bottom, I'm like, okay, cool, cool. All right, this is professional. So if the other person takes it in any other kind of way, that's not on me. Um, it's kind of for myself, it's kind of be like, okay, good job, Christopher, you're really a professional. Um, or if I want something to be really like hearted, I may see that professional and then see like a uh, smiley face with the glasses, the, that emoji comes up. Sometimes. Uh, and for me, that's like, okay, it's professional, but it's really lighthearted. That's good. Uh, sometimes I, I type stuff and then like the little uh, red guy with the horns comes up and I'm like, that is not at all how I, I need to change some of my words in here. Um, so that, that's, that's how it can be used to kind of help with some of that stuff. Because um, maybe you're saying something, you're trying to just be serious, but it comes out angry. You don't want that to happen. So that's why that's used. Um, so, so these other ones we'll be looking at uh, throughout this uh, throughout the semester. Databases, look at pivot tables within spreadsheets, uh, visual basic for applications. So this is actually uh, a scripting language to use for, office, for Microsoft Office products. Um, something I showed earlier today was actually Python, so that you can, uh, it's a programming language, it's my favorite programming language. Uh, oh Let's see, presentation software, you guys have already used PowerPoint, and we will make a web page in this course. So there are specialized application software that are used specifically for special tasks, they are specialized. So that is what they are all about um, doing. So spelling and grammar checks. Grammarly, how many of you ever heard of that? Grammarly uses that emoji analysis a lot now too. Um, automatically, it comes up with um, anytime I'm um, typing anything on my personal computer, I have Grammarly, which is actually really funny if you use that and you use um, Gmail at the same time. Um, because you'll see both. And sometimes it's funny to me because sometimes they don't have the same emoji come up. And so I'm like, hmm, which one's correct? Or is this coming off in both kind of flavors? So um, anyway, so you can, there are tons of different specialized application softwares. Um, some that people may never use. Um, so yeah. Um, if you are into doing video editing, Audacity is something that is very useful. For that the reason is um, because at the beginning of any recording what you actually should do is leave some time where you don't say anything and that's to get the white noise so the stuff that's in the background that you don't really think about that you don't think gets picked up by your microphone um, it will this will um, allow you so it doesn't have to be for a video recording you could do it just for any audio recording um, i usually use it for my video recording but what I'll do is then I take the audio, get the first part of it. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, that where there's, I'm not speaking at all, so it only has background noise. And it'll go through and it'll um, delete that from the rest of it. So it kind of like normalizes it out. So it's gone. So that background noise is never heard throughout the entire, um, throughout the entire audio. But the purpose of that scene is literally just to make the audio to, to uh, edit it, to record it. And to do the other, what I was talking about, like to be able to delete things, uh, so clean it up. Um, but that's all it's for. But this used to be on every computer that I would buy automatically. It's not there anymore because people don't use it as much. Um, and there are a couple other things too. So um, his video on freeware versus shareware, I totally suggest that you all take a look at that. Um, I'll give you a hint. Both of these are said to be free. But only one of them is. Which one do you think is actually the free one? Yeah, I think you guys got it. The shareware um, is more like, oh, you can have this, but maybe you should send this to a friend as well. Or, hey, if you can totally keep using this thing for free, but you know, you probably should give us some money for it. Or, hey, if you want to use these features, you're gonna have to give us some money. So, you guys have probably. Dealt with those, especially made with some games. Um, what's that game what I also used to play all the time? Fruit Ninja or one of those things. He would send me a thing like every day at 3 a.m. in the morning to play. I never played. Okay. 
any questions about software and or hardware or anything that we talked about today? Okay, so I'm going to spend the rest of the time kind of going over this assignment. I know a lot of you have questions about this. Um, I want to make sure everything is clear. Um, so I'm going to go back up to the first two questions that we had today, and then I'll open the door for more questions. Uh, how much detail do I want? Name brands for processors or just what is needed for the computer? Um, if you if you can find a name brand for the processor, I would love to see that information. Some of you will get very um, detailed with this, and that is perfectly fine with me. Um, but when it comes to um, when it comes to detail, um, like with the processor, for instance. I don't need to know what company it came from, but I would like to know, okay, how many bits is it? Why did you pick that? And again, and a valid answer would can be, I just needed a computer. I didn't care what type it was. This one was cheaper. That is a valid reason. But since the person that asked that question, I know is going into game design. So you would may probably have more detailed answer because it would, the type of processor and especially the GPU um, that you would have would matter, right? And so you would probably even go into a name brand in your detail, okay? Is it required? No, but I personally, when I'm like reading back through your stuff, I might say that to you. I might say, hey, I know you're going in game design, so maybe you want to think more about what type of brands uh, ha have success or have good reviews. Um, Oh, I, I like that process. I like I like that uh, GPU as well, but I usually buy mines from this company. It has the same specs. And even though they don't have good review, good reviews or a lot of people don't buy them, this is the reason why I use them. Like I would probably give you that. Um, so to answer your question, just give what's needed for the computer. Um, but get as detailed as you want to at beyond that. Uh, not too specific. I just found a couple of Rebuild PCs on Amazon and eBay and such. Yes, so like that. That's that's perfectly fine. Like uh, with um, you know, Chantel earlier was saying that she doesn't care about the computer that she needs. She just uh, and she doesn't see a need for it in her future either. Um, to have a specific type or have all these special features, that's fine. You say like, oh, I see some refurbished ones online. I'm just gonna take some of those. That's cool. Maybe you even say, I'm gonna find the cheapest ones I can. Um, that's what I do personally when it comes to Chromebooks. I look for the cheapest one I can. And I've actually had a problem with it. Um, the reason I have problems because I have like, have like, I think technically I have five, uh, or I have had five, but I literally bought three at one time because they were eighty bucks each, uh, brand new. And so I was like, I can't pass this deal up. And I sold the other two uh, later, but I didn't even use the first one until. Uh, two years or a year and a half after I bought it. It was the first time I actually opened it out of the box. Do you want us to look up and find three pre-built PCs or just the parts for building three PCs? Yes. So in other words, either one. Um, most people, when they do this assignment, uh, actually, I can't say that because it switches every semester. I have a lot of students that go into building their own PCs. And, it's, and a lot of them have no background with it whatsoever. They were just like, OK, this might be a cool way for me to uh, learn about this. And maybe I could see uh, how expensive this would be if I really wanted to build it my own. So that's what um, that's what most of the students in the I shouldn't say most of the students because it does change every semester. But a lot of students do do um, looking up, OK, what are the parts that I need? That is not necessary, though, for this assignment. You could go through, yeah, this, yeah, I think it's fun too. Um, what you're doing is you're going through and say, thinking about what is it that you need for the computer. Again, you could legit say, I just need a computer that has a screen, it's gonna run, and that's it. Okay, what is it you're gonna be running? For instance, you may wanna have a 64 bit operating system, but you should realize that. That might be something to look up. Do I need 64-bit or 32-bit? Just do some little research on which is better. What's your justification now? Because I don't really care about what kind of computer you have. 
go that route. Maybe then you may say you don't care what kind of computer you have, but does that mean you want a desktop or a laptop? One's going to be cheaper than the other. One's going to be portable. Will you need it to go anywhere and everywhere? Um, hard drive, or are you going to get a solid, um, are you going to get a disk drive, or are you going to get a solid state drive? How much RAM are you going to need? Again, it may not matter to you. Do you need to have your own, do you need to have a GPU, or do you use the standard video graphics card? These are things that you want to ask yourself. And then getting into the software, too. Antivirus software. Do you use Mac, uh, McAfee or do you use Norton? Because that used to come automatically on everything. Uh, your internet browser. Are you going to use Chrome? Are you going to use? Do you want to use Safari? Do you use Microsoft Edge? Do you want to make sure Edge is gone forever so you don't have to worry about it? It keeps popping up on its own. Um, those are just some considerations. These are not. You must include this into your thing. This product should definitely be included in yours. Again, it is just a consideration because you may say, I'm just going to use a tablet. I don't ever want to use a computer. I have no need to use a computer. And here's why. Here's my justification. You haven't considered a desktop or laptop at all, but you've answered the question completely. Um, think about what are you using it for? A lot of you may say, I, I just need a computer to use a computer. Well, what does that mean to be able to socialize? Do you play any games? And I'm not talking about a hard gaming PC or having one, but playing games could be Candy Crush. That was the game I was trying to think of. It wasn't for anything. Candy Crush. Um, could be playing Candy Crush. Okay. Candy Crush easier on just using a regular laptop, or is it easier on um, when you have a touchscreen? You know, I love playing Candy Crush. I need to make sure that's a part of my uh, computer. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just I'm just giving examples. Is the text box the comment section in the submission? Um, no. Um, let's see if that's working. I don't know if I can even get to it though. I don't know if it'll let me. Yeah, it won't let me go through that. Um, I was going to try to show you an example of what it looks like. Um, but when you submit, you actually at the top of when you submit, there um, or the box that comes up when you click the blue button where you can choose files. One of the options for um, at the top is like a little tab. It'll say like Google Docs. Another option is um, is text entry. And that's what I'm talking about when I say technique. Let's see where that chat goes so I can see what the other questions are. So not the comment section. Comment section is comments. Text the text box thing I was talking about is uh, above the where it says choose files and everything. There is a little tab um, that actually will say uh, text entry. You can click on that one and you can just begin typing in. Um, otherwise, you're on the file entry, or there's one that even says like Google Docs. Okay, so there's two parts in here. It says, um, okay, you see it fit. Uh, it says plan your purchase. So this is kind of where you should start anyway. Um, with anything in life, you should plan things out. So uh, it's kind of like describing your problem. What is it that you're actually trying to do? You want a computer. Okay, what do you want a computer for? What is it that you want it to be able to do? And once you do that, are you using a desktop or a laptop? And again, you may even go further and say, I don't need either one. I need a tablet. Uh, how much RAM will you need? Explain why you got that amount of RAM. The valid answer is, and I don't want to I don't want to see everyone do this because it wouldn't make sense for everyone to do this, but the valid answer is I don't care how much RAM was there. The base amount is enough for me. And that's because I'm only doing da 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 of my computer. That is a answer. That is a valid answer. Okay. Um, do you need a CD-ROM or a C, uh, or DVD? This could be some for some people. This could be very important. Um, I for years have not had to use one, so I wouldn't get a computer with one. Then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, I have had to um, make songs, and 
when people need beats, they don't want to do it on a MP3 player or to do it from their phone. They want an actual CD. So I have a computer that has a, uh, a, a burner on it, so I could actually do that. Instead of going out and buying a, uh, a DVD burner and then installing it, its drivers, and then plugging it in with USB, that would take too long. And then I have to keep up with another device. So I didn't have a computer. Next computer I got had this with it. Uh, are you, what type of software are you going to be having? On, are you going to have on your computer? Do you need to use something like such micro, such as Microsoft Access? If you do, you cannot use anything but a Windows computer. So these are legit things that you need to think about. What type of input, output, process, and storage devices would you have? Okay. And some people, when they do this, they just literally go straight down the line. They copy and paste these questions in, and underneath it, they answer them. Sure, you can do that, but and overall you should be able to talk about this um and not just because of what we've talked about in class but i imagine that if you were to go out and buy a computer there's a reason you buy what you buy and that could start off with i just look for the cheapest thing there because i don't care what's on it and i don't have i don't have a reason to care why it's on it that is valid so you can tell me those primary uses that you're going to have you're going to tell me that you got a laptop instead of a desktop so that you carry around wherever you went you can tell me that I didn't need to. It doesn't matter how much RAM I needed. I just got the just got any of them because I don't really care about short term memory and how things can uh, speed up or uh, speed up when it's processing due to it. Okay, cool. Boom. What piece of software is most important to you and why? Oh, I just need to get on the internet. Uh, what other softwares would you like to add? I don't really need anything else. I can do everything on the internet. Do you need a DVD ROM, CD ROM? No, I I play everything off of Spotify. What kind of input output devices did you need? It already came with the screen, uh, so I didn't really need anything else for that. Uh, it had a webcam already and a good microphone. Like you, you talk about these things. So um, I hope I'm kind of like mortifying or blowing apart the walls that may be coming up in your mind. Like this assignment is too hard, or I don't understand what I need to do or I don't understand how to answer these questions. You you do, you have you have already within your life answered these questions before. If you already purchased a computer or if you purchased anything on your own, you have had these thoughts come to your mind. Why am I getting this? What is the purpose of me having it? What kind of features am I looking for? And the rest of the stuff I don't care about. You have You have answered these questions before in life. I'm just trying to get you to actually realize that you have and apply it towards this. Does that make sense to everyone? Or I should ask, does that not make sense to anyone? Okay. All right. Um, so the last part here, research and select three computers. Um, so you've already done your research on like which computers will fit your needs up here. I said find at least three. You have more than that, fine. Um, I have literally asked people that have pretty much built their dream computer from scratch and then went online and found two others just randomly. They're like, I just wanted to go all out to see what would happen with my dream computer and see how much it would cost. The other two, I, didn't really, I honestly didn't really care about some other stuff. They had these basic needs that I cared about and that was it. And that, that's how they've um, presented it. Now, after that, you need to fill a, pick a budget that you feel is reasonable. Uh, I've had other instructors tell me uh, when they've given this assignment to students that students usually don't understand how to pick a budget. Um, I think that's I think that's great that you don't understand how to pick a budget because now you'll have to. You'll have to think about how much money would you have, you know, in your career to go towards this, or um, how much money would you need to go towards this. So I say if you have trouble, pick a thousand. Uh, which I find funny because most of the time when I say that, students will just pick thousand because they don't want to, you know, they don't want to think about a budget, which I completely get. Then they always try to have a MacBook. It's going to be very hard to get a MacBook under a thousand dollars. Very hard. You pretty much would have to have some kind of super discount with Mac directly to get one for so cheap, or to buy it off uh, second hand from someone. Um, so one is the MacBook. <laughs> What'd you say? I said the cheapest one is the MacBook Air, and it's like eight something. Yeah, it's like eight eight twenty nine. I think that's 
I think that is with the discount, though, with the like uh, education or student discount. Yeah. Um, but you can get any Windows computer for much less than that, a Chromebook, even less. Like you can get some from under, under 100 bucks that are brand new and they work perfectly fine, depending on your needs, right? And again, you may need to have a MacBook. Um, if you have a MacBook Air, there are going to be things that you won't be able to um, won't be able to do on it. So you know those are uh, those are things that you got to think about. So how does the budget that you pick affect the features that you want in your computer? You may say like the dream computer that you have built is twenty four hundred dollars. Okay, and you're like, all right, I don't I can spend you know eighteen hundred or sixteen hundred or twelve hundred. What are some features you're going to have to get rid of now in order to, to sacrifice in order for you to stay on the budget to get that computer? And maybe you'll say, because of my budget, I decided to throw my dream computer that I built from scratch away um, and buy one of these others, and that way I can save up money towards it in the future. I've had those answers before. Um, which one did you select out of the three choices or or more that you showed me? Why'd you select it? Name two items that you did not purchase due to budgetary restriction. Um, some things that people have rarely brought up in this part here, is the idea of buying a printer. Remember, that's one of those output devices. Um, and better speakers. Someone one time put in Beats by Dre. That was, that was excellent. I never thought about the idea of, you know what, I want to have some very good um, headphones to go along with my computer. And some of them, uh, there was a point in time where they were advertising Beats by Dre with HPs, and so they would come with it. Or in the the speaker system that was already uh, within it was uh, was Beats by Dre, but then it would come with headphones as well. Uh, I remember that. I remember you guys know like how they have like these boxes for Jordans and stuff. Um, my one of my old roommates he he went out and bought like one of the first HPs that was with Beats by Dre, and it had these like silver headphones with like the red logo in the middle. And he kept the box and he would put it in the box and take it out every day, like every time he used it, and take very good care of it, just like it was a pair of shoes and stuff. But uh, anyway, so I hope that eases any of you all's concerns with this. And if it doesn't, say so now so we can answer any questions. We have um, about five minutes left. So anyone have any questions about this assignment or any unease about it? You can even send a private question in chat if you don't want everyone else to know. Okay, all right, I'll just kind of go through the rubric here real quick. Um, the student learning outcome number two is to differentiate the role and function of hardware, operating systems, application programming and networking. You're not dealing with programming and networking, so to speak, you could you could include that into your, uh, um, into your assignment, but you don't have to, but you are talking about hardware, operating systems and applications. You are talking about different. Uh, you are differentiating between a role and function by telling me which you're which one you're deciding to purchase and why. Um, hardware components. Identify common hardware components and their uses. You're telling me what you're purchasing and why you're getting it. Same thing with software. Identify different types of software and their uses. What softwares are you going to need on your computer? Appropriate technology. Determine when technology is useful and select the appropriate tools and technology resources to address a variety of tasks and problems. I'm just using this for socializing. I'm using this for gaming. I'm using this for school. I'm using this for whatever. And this is why I'm picking this. Pretty much this whole assignment. Business technology. Describe how technology is used in the departments of business and various career paths. I told you guys to think about your future career. Uh, one of you mentioned already that it won't, your future career, won't, it won't matter what type of computer you have. You have answered this question. Or you, you have... Uh, you have uh, done this outcome. That sounds weird to say. I can't think of a better way to say that. Um, you have checked this off your list, however, however you want to say that. And then the rest of it is just more of uh, objective specific to this. So giving a thought, all this really is about giving thoughtful descriptions and ex uh, logical explanations for the questions that are asked up here. So uh, that's pretty much it. So you answer the questions. I do say at, at least three computers. That's one important thing. Uh, I do most. This is probably the part that people miss the most out on. Um, number uh, part one, question six, and part two, question two. 
because it, there is a, a number of things that should be here. You should mention input devices. You should mention your output devices, your storage, and your process. Okay. Uh, even if that is, I it doesn't matter to me what type I get. Tell me what you got though, right? Or what you, what you're choosing. Your reason for getting it could be it doesn't matter what I got, but you still should at least mention what you got. Does that make uh, that that should make sense to everyone? Now, if it doesn't, please say so so I can go over that again. Um, and then out here those at least three computers. If you have more computers, you don't get, you know, five extra points on top of it. No, um, you just get at max 15 points for this part. Okay. All right, about two minutes left. Any other questions for anyone? Cool. All right. Well, um, at the last minute, I will say, as I mentioned before, you can go back and update or, or add corrections to your past assignments. So if you miss parts, um, it is I put that in the in the grading of the rubric. Um, thank you for those of you that recorded your PowerPoints. And uh, one other thing I guess I should mention is once you complete this assignment, go ahead, why don't you go ahead and add a slide in uh, into your portfolio. Uh, if you're using PowerPoint, if you're doing a, your portfolio a different way, then you know add it to whatever you're doing. Um, but about this assignment, you know, that way you can already have it done, and when we get to week 15, you're not scrambling to finish it. You're not scrambling to go through all your past assignments and try to put a portfolio together. So, and it's as simple as as you all saw, you can record on each slide separately, and it'll be attached to it. So. Um, yeah, so I would suggest doing that. And that's class. So I look forward to reading. Uh, I look forward to going through your portfolios uh, this weekend and um, getting to um, type of computers that you all selected and to see what you all came up with, especially for those of you that um, don't have a, any preferences with any of this. I really look forward to see what you come up with. So, all right, that's it. Uh, you all have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can stay on if you need to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good